welcome to another episode of the Billy Ho Show. And here in Auckland, we're on day or week six, I think, of being locked down. Um, another week to go. So well, what I'm going to do after I've done this introduction is we're going to go down to Ellesmere and uh, I'll do a bit of ploughing, see how I go with that. But anyway, when I was a boy, I think milk was uh, very important and uh, it was my job to put out the milk bottles uh, of an evening and somewhere in the night the milkman came, changed them over and uh, we brought the milk in the next morning. Um, what I can remember is when I was at school we had to drink about uh, a half a pint or a quarter pint of milk and they came in crates, they probably arrived about 8 o'clock and we got to drink them at about 11 o'clock just after uh, morning tea or playtime. Um, but back in the day the, the, the tops came with a little cardboard thing with a little push out piece in the middle that you could either put a straw in or just pour it out through this little hole. But the beauty about that was, is when you finished with the milk, you just tidied up this cardboard top and uh, poked the hole out and uh, you can make a pom-pom just by going round and round and round and round and round with some, with some wool. And when you finished, you sort of cut it all open, tie it together, tie it in, you know, in the middle with a piece of string and then you had your little pom-pom that you could put on your hat. Also, the uh, milk is uh, important. In fact, it started way back in the day, probably about 1920s or even earlier than that, and they had milk factories all over the country. And my, the point of all this is that in 1951, the, uh, the milk tankers started. So uh, let's have a look at some old photographs of some old milk tankers that the milk uh, dairy factories decided to buy to go out and collect their milk. My recollection of all this is, uh, is my uh, Nana's husband, a guy called Nick, List. He drove a comma Arctic and he went around all the farms uh, in the area, collected the milk and brought it all back to the Tūrua uh, dairy factory which is in the Piako districts between Pairua and Thames. And there's another factory that wasn't far away, Waitakaruru, and in 1951-52 that was apparently the, produced the most cheese of any other dairy factory in the world, so that was quite exciting about that one. But anyway, let's have a look at some of these uh, milk tankers. Before 1900, farmers took their milk by horse and cart to their local dairy factory. Looking at this old photograph, road conditions look pretty tough. Coming forward and in the late teens, that's of the 19 teens, electric trucks were popular with the dairy factories and they tell me there were something like 300 uh, electric trucks throughout the country. Seems they did about 60 miles on a charge, which was enough to get them around their various runs. They charged up overnight, ready for the next day. Moving forward again in the 30s, 40s, 50s, local carriers collected the milk directly from the farmer's gate. And this is the era I remember as a kid. Then, as I said, in 1951, dairy factories introduced the milk tanker that went out and collected milk direct from the farmer's tanks. Being the early 50s, the truck of choice seems to be the old S Bedford, considered a big truck for its time. So that's the choice a lot of dairy factories made, the old S Betty. There are other trucks to choose from, like Morris and Austin, but as I said, the majority of dairy factories chose the S Betty as their truck of choice. Coming forward, another popular tanker was the old TS3 Comma. Some dairy factories had fleets of these commas. Coming into the 1960s, the old Thames Trader paid its part in tankers and the 60s commas had their fleets as well. But coming through the 60s, I think the old TK Bedford had its share of the market as well. So that's a little bit about tankers and milk in New Zealand. What we're going to do now is head south of Christchurch and I'm going to try my hand at a bit of ploughing. In this episode, we're at Sedgemere on the Canterbury Plains, attending a local ploughing weekend. The people here are mainly locals, but people from the surrounding districts are here as well. It's a chance for the local farmers to get out their old tractors and pit their skills against their neighbours. Representative here is the Ellesmere Vintage Club, and we spoke to these guys a few programmes ago. So let's enjoy the day here at Sedgemere. Now, on the uh, 150th anniversary of Southbridge, they're having a beard competition and these three guys are locals and they're all growing their beards. You have to grow your beard for 150 days. 
So the man on the left must have really fast growing hair, because this is the longest, and uh, our host John is not bad, and uh, the President uh, Dewey there, is, uh, I think he might have surpassed John. But uh, no, they're pretty, pretty fancy beards, that's for sure. The only horse entry are these two horses with the lady doing the controls and uh, the man doing the ploughing, just standing along behind as the horses tow it. And uh, yes, the, the, uh, they scored 10 and one of the judges said that it was the only time he ever in his whole career of judging ploughing that he'd see uh, somebody score 10. So there's uh, quite a, a, an amazing little team here. And that's pretty straight. We've been to a few of these ploughing competitions and that's not bad. Probably score maybe eight if I was a judge for that. But to get ten, it's, uh, it's actually quite something else. But this man's very uh, um, on the ball. He obviously knows what he's doing. Disconnects the horses at each end, sets the plough up again. Make sure everything's just tickety-boo before he starts the next line. Well, it must take a fair bit to train horses to do this. There's uh, people up in Errolon Station, up in um, the Southern Alps there that have horses for this and uh, they're quite well known but I think this man is just a local person. And there are other tractors here doing the same thing so there's sections of uh, vintage tractors, there's um, the hydraulic tractors. You can see the feet on these horses, you, you wouldn't want one of them to stand on your toe that's for sure. But they're all in time, they all look very happy. One's in the furrow I guess that's his job, he knows what he's doing. And the other fellow is helping pull the weight. So I guess the one in the furrow is the one in charge and of course the lady's telling them what to do and the man's keeping concentration on keeping that power nice and straight. And again, his uh, line looks very, very good. And way down in the back there is, I like the Canterbury Plains there, have a lovely backdrop of the Southern Alps and they're all covered with a bit of snow which makes the whole place and the whole day look absolutely awesome. And after this they'll all go down to the local hall at Sedgemere and uh, have a cup of tea. There'll be the ladies out the back making the tea and uh, all the competitors and spectators will be enjoying a, a post-mortem of the day. And here's a vintage tractor. It's uh, done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows. And it's not a it's not a race ploughing. He's just setting off at a, a nice steady pace. And you have to lean back a bit to operate the handles on the old ploughs and some of them have bits of string like that one has, a bit of rope cord so he can uh, lift the plough and drop the plough. And the man with the Alice Chalmers, he's watching his uh, twin ploughs. He's got two levers sticking out from the uh, from the plough itself and there's a little bit of adjustment as it goes along so you, you spend a lot of time bending over backwards as it were uh, adjusting your uh, adjusting your plough. I wonder if that where bending over backwards came from. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, but when you're twisted like that I guess you, you, you can just turn that wheel a little bit accidentally and get a little bit of a kink in your furrow and lose some points. I think his right, his right uh, front wheel there is into the side of the furrow. I suppose that's what helping it keep in a straight line, a bit like a railway line. Just keep your eye on that bit of string, folks. That's a very important component on that plough. Well, it's got another lever there. I never noticed it's the head. Yeah. And onto a little lever, the other lever. And as I was saying, you spend a lot of time looking backwards. Yeah, yeah. And you think they think they might have a seat sideways. There's some machines that have a seat that sits actually across the machine, so you can yeah. look forward and you can look back. 
the one that springs to mind is the big, huge straddle machines that shift containers on the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah. They all sit sideways. Sideways, yeah. Yeah. Unlike the horses, the tractor stay connected and they just do a bit of a loop and uh, line their line their furrows up again and off they go, whereas the man and the horses, as you've seen, will uh, detach the horses, manually reset his plough facing the other way and attach the horses again and off he goes. This is George Bowson and uh, George is 85 years of age and uh, he got a prize yesterday. George, my name's Bill Hoheffer. George is the name. How do you do, George? Nice to meet you. Yeah. And uh, you did pretty well yesterday. Oh, no. No? No. Well, they gave you a prize. Well, they give you a cake of chocolate or something? Yeah, like oldest ploughman. Oh, <laughs> oldest ploughman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm the oldest ploughman. How old are you now? 87. Good God, eh? That's a good age. <laughs> Still doing this, yeah. Oh, well, I, I, they took me into coming back to it. I haven't done it for 20 years. Oh, OK. Yeah, but oh, I've got the, about the worst blasted plot here, I reckon. Got oh, much straw and stuff on it. Yeah, I see that, and you, yeah. you've got the most, the, the, the southern most plot. plot. Yeah. Oh, so are you allowed to protest and say, hey, hang on a minute, oh, this isn't very if much? I could pull out. If I oh. <laughs> Good on you. Yeah. So, uh, so we got 20 years ago since you got on this. Oh, at least 20. Yeah. yeah. Good on you. Did you do this for a living? Oh no. Oh well, yes. I used to work on farms. I did a lot of ploughing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't fancy like this. <laughs> no, the guy and the horses are doing well. He got a good price yesterday. Here yeah, go. he's doing all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, my dad used to drive the horses, but uh, I refused to drive them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I said, if you want horses, you can drive them. Fair enough. <laughs> I see you've got a diesel Fergie there. Are they pretty rare? Yeah. There's not many of them. No, no. There's a few around. Another one here, uh, there's one, when Ash has got one, he's got one up there somewhere. Yeah. But there's not many of them. They, yeah. they didn't make them for long, and then they changed the model. Oh, OK. They went on to the Ferguson 35. And, yeah. So what year is that, 40 something? 53 oh, okay. or 4 oh, or okay. something like that, yeah. yeah. It was their very first diesel. Yes. And it coats with this nice and slow, I guess, this slow, oh, slow revving no, motor and just no, takes along. Oh, well, I mean, she'll rev up, she'll, she'll do well over 2,000. Yeah. Furs along, when, you, when you're doing work with her, you go open her up and yeah. let her go. But she pulls well at low rev, yeah. Wow. Yep. <laughs> oh, no, I've, I've had it for donkey's years, <laughs> I don't know how long. And it keeps on keeping on. Yeah, it never has anything done to it. No. Never has to anything done. The only thing I've ever done to it is put tyres on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and what about the plough? Is that your plough? Well, yeah, or? I bought that for, at a clearing sale for five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> they had all the stuff for sale there and sold everything by that and that was left. And the auctioneers are sort of walking away a bit. Oh, okay. And I said, how much do you want for the plough? Oh, Five bucks, he said. I said, right. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Take this before you change your mind. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it goes all right. It's, it's, yeah. The plough's all right, but... Uh, Just oh. tell me what the little weight is for. This little... This, this little... Well, that's to keep that from uh, engaging on the wheels. See, when you go to lift it, you pull that into there. Yep. And it winds itself up and, and clicks in over there. And all right. I saw all these old ploughs are equipped with a piece of rope. I got what? They all seem to be equipped with a piece of rope. Oh yeah, well the rope uh, operates the lift. Oh okay, of course it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the drop, yeah. And you've got two levers. Most of them seem to have two little levers as well. Front and One back. here. So how do you get on when you're going along and you're sort of half twisted, sort of adjusting your plough as you go along? That must be hard on the back. Oh well, uh, the old fashioned tractors, you could reach them quite easy. Oh okay. Yeah. These modern, more later ones, you sit away forward on them. So the old tractors you sat away back over the back axle. Yep. And you could reach the levers and everything. No trouble. Yeah. So I've got a little crawler tractor at home. And uh, you sit on that good, you can reach all the levers and everything on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I see you've got a couple of crescents there. Everybody seems to have a big crescent in their back pocket. I guess these nuts are pretty big. Yeah, well, I've got a big one in the, down the other end there, in the toolbox. Yep. 
But uh, yeah, they're big nuts. Yeah. But oh, you don't have to alter them much. Once you get it set right, just leave it alone. And that's a, a big weight? Yeah, about 200 pounds. And that's just solely to keep the bit of weight well, on the plough? it just holds it down if it's in rough yeah. going and shingle and boulders. And yeah, I just I hadn't yeah. seen anything like that on the others. No, it's not necessary to have it there, but it's on there, so I left it there. Fair enough. Big brutal thing to lift. <laughs> yeah. 87 years old, it starts to get a bit heavy. Yeah, that's yeah. right, it does, it certainly does. Yep. Yeah. Good but on you. She's blocking up to hell. <laughs> so you got to unblock it now, do you have yeah, to do I that? Yeah, unblock it. No, good on you. It drags the straw up, but I'm nearly out of it. Oh, okay. I'm nearly out of the straw. This way. Next round should be okay, I hope. Good on you. I'm getting sick of digging straw out from underneath <laughs> it. <laughs> and you're not allowed, in these competitions, you, you've got to do it all yourself. Nobody's well, allowed to have to. Oh, okay. Yeah. But surely, being the oldest ploughman here, you, you, you know, uh, they, they, should be able to they, enlist they, some they help. They put me next to uh, Wayne there so that he could help me. Oh, so okay. Well, I've, I've well done he the, seems to bug it off. <laughs> I've done the hell's own lot more ploughing than ever he's done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a job one time. <laughs> Yes, oh well. It's good to see you. Yeah. I watch your program too and I thoroughly enjoy it. Thanks. This is uh, young Wayne Ward who's uh, helping old George out. The oldest ploughman we have here and uh, good on you Wayne for doing that. George is not happy with the straw so we've volunteered Wayne to uh, give him a hand. <laughs> he's, a good, he's a good lad Wayne. <laughs> He's a good lad, yeah. <laughs> Milburn Lime, every time. Milburn Lime, available all over the Southland District and beyond. Top grade lime that's been available year after year. Call them on 03 417 8228. The next time you need lime, think Milburn Lime, every time. When welcome to our little show and um, <laughs> you've got a very rare tractor. There's a guy down the other end called George who's uh, got one of these as well, but 1940s? Uh, no, this this was just at the right at the end of this before the gold and grey ones come to so this is early 1956. Oh, okay. I think um, George is, is, is earlier in the run, but they, they started in about 1951 in England. Um, the standard uh, built diesel motor uh, Harry Ferguson wasn't too keen on this because it couldn't interchange with the petrol motor tractor because the centre casting is different, starter motors on the opposite side, um, so they had to make a different bell housing and the block is longer so they had to make a different mounting at the front so the same bonnet still fitted. Sure. But, um, and they had to leave the repower market to uh, Perkins. Oh, okay. Now they tell me that the, uh, the Fergie engine is also part of the, uh, the Vanguard car. Yes, that's correct, Bill. Um, the, the whole track was ma manufactured by um, Standard Vanguard, Standard Motor Company in their uh, Banner Lane factory. And uh, this motor was also used in the Vanguard car, the same as the uh, motors in the uh, petrol tractor that was in the Vanguard car also in the, in the 50s, from about 48, I think, through to the end of the uh, Vanguard. Car. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen a diesel uh, Vanguard car, lots of petrols around at the time, but have you ever seen one? Yes, I, I have seen just one only, Bill, at uh, Doylston a Rally about, uh, oh, it would be 12, 18 months ago. Oh, okay. One turned up there, the Beetleback model, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, the, with this diesel motor in it. That's actually known as a 20C motor, and the later gold Belly Ferguson has a 23C, slightly bigger. Right. The uh, little transfer on the top there, I, I don't think I've seen that before either. No, well that was a New Zealand only thing. Oh, the okay. importers did that and the blue line around the bonnet. And also this uh, air cleaner normally sat down the side by the manifold. In New Zealand they put it up there, up out of the dust. Our condition is probably a bit drier than in England. Sure. Yeah, uh, and that's the traditional um, exhaust? Yes, that was an option. Either Originally they went down underneath and that was an option, that elbow, and put it up in the air. Um, the motors are quite rare in the fact they've got a Kygas start, which was here 
a heater, a high gas start, a decompressor and an excess fuel device. Four different starting aids. Wow. And it still struggled to get going on a frosty morning <laughs> like this morning. We saw one of these in a shed uh, the other day and it had Ford written on it. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be right. So, And I understand there was a little bit of friction between Ford and Fergie. Uh, yes, there was in the end. They fell out um, because Ford manufactured the Fergie tractor prior to the Vanguard uh, standard people making them. And then uh, Ford carried on making tractors and he put the Ferguson patented hydraulic system in and that's what the argument was over and there was some millions of dollars I think uh, involved in the settlement. Are there many Fords, Fergies around? Uh, yes there's a few around, uh, I, I wouldn't be sure of numbers but I know uh, John Spark has one in the museum and uh, there's a few others you see at uh, various rallies around the country. Sure, so they're relatively rare here? They are relatively rare, yes, yeah, right. that would be right. I see you've got the sack on the seat, I think just every tractor here has got a sack on the seat. <laughs> yeah, that was sort of traditional, um, sometimes an old tin shaped seat um, <laughs> and with a sack on it was sort of the traditional thing. I think that was sort of prior to pile ointment becoming available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it saved the backside sweating. Yeah. It's, a, it's a natural material, it breathes. I see even the plough on the back there looks a bit different. Yes, that's a New Zealand made uh, red and grey, uh, made in Dunedin, and that would be about 1951 vintage. Oh, Up okay. till then they've been trailing ploughs and this was their uh, first attempt at building a uh, mounted plough. So this is, uh, this is a hydraulic? Well, it fits onto the Ferguson hydraulic system. Yep, yep. Um, so in this competition it will be known as a... It's a mounted a, plough. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so that and the hydraulic is a, is a section, or is this a section yes, it by is. itself? Yes, it is a section here today. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's, they haven't got enough entries, so they put them together. Oh, okay. But today there's enough entries, so um, the uh, all the mounted ploughs are together. Sure. But we've got a mixture of skills here today, right from novices and blokes like me, who you normally just go out for a day's enjoyment. Yes. And some of them people here that are represented New Zealand. Yeah, I see Bob Merton's, is, uh, he, his, his, his uh, ploughing was pretty spot on. Yes, well uh, he's not ploughing with the one that he would normally plough in to go overseas, but it's gear that he did use originally, because sure. this um, silver plough contest has been going since 1956. Yeah, yeah. No, we really enjoyed our time down in, um, down in Palmerston, that was just uh, a big eye opener for me. Yes, well I was just down there as a spectator. <laughs> I, I, I'm not up to that, uh, quite up to that standard, Fair even enough. though I've been ploughing yeah. since I was a... So I see there's a, a red, orange and um, green flag there, just maybe talk me through that. Yes, that's right. Well the red flag uh, stays up and then there's an orange flag goes up with the red for five minutes before starting and right. five minutes uh, it'll go up with the green flag five minutes before finish. Oh, okay. And then when the red flag goes back up, that's finished. So, so and, whatever you're doing, that's it, stop. Well, if, you, if you're moving, in the plot you can go to the end without penalty oh, yeah. but if you've got to come back in and plough more you're yeah. on penalty points. Right, fair enough. So there's a time factor as well so you've yeah. got to do this whole thing within however long it takes. Yeah normally it's three hours yep. for the plot you have uh, 20 minutes for your first two splits um, and then you stop while the judges have a look at that then you commence ploughing so you've got two hours 40 minutes from then. So we'll be due to, to finish today in another 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like there's a few still going. Oh, yeah, there's a few still Most going, but um, we're having lunch at the end of the event today, so they're not mucking around. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Hunger makes a man keep yeah, on with the job. Does. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, uh, Wynn, for your uh, information about this old Fergie. And, uh, yeah, uh, yes. you're welcome, Bill. Yeah. Yeah, it is turning the dirt again, but there are judges, and the judges will come along and just check it all over, uh, allocate the points, and in yesterday's competition, he actually came second in the novice section. The young Jaunty's a, a novice, he hasn't been doing this too long, but he's got his beloved Case tractor, and I guess he's enjoying every single minute he's on it. There I am. The last time I did this, I was at Hokitika, and they're ploughing. We'll have a look how good I was when I get out of this track. Anyway, we get to the end and we kick it forward a bit. 
Let's get out of George's way. You can't be a ploughman unless you've got one of these. Reed and grey. Now we saw a plough the other day in a shed and it was about that high and what it was for was ploughing through tea tree. Great big sort of like sort a... Of yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. a massive thing. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen one of those working? I used to use a wee Ferguson swamp plough years ago. Oh, okay. In the wet country that my parents had. Right. Oh. Yeah. Massive used, thing. Yeah, I used training swamp ploughs and two point linkage ones. Yeah. Right. So this Reed and Grey are in Invercargill, I think, were they? Dunedin. Dunedin. Oh, okay. Green Island, Dunedin. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. So just walk me through this old plough. How old is it to start off with? Well, I'd say it would be built in the early 40s. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, you got your hand lift on the, for the wheel on the front. This one? No, the far one is the, for the front wheel. Oh, yes. This is for your depth control. Yeah. And also the handle and your rope pull lifts on the wheel here. Yeah, I see your ropes. Sort of, I've seen some ropes and this one's starting to sort of look like a bit of moss on it. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's been around. I've actually only had this plough two years. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's come from the same place as tractor did. Sure. So, uh, yeah, a bit of work to do on it, but we're getting there. So, are you a, a novice? Yes, I'm a novice, yeah. Oh, okay. But so even though I did a lot of farm work years ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, George was uh, complaining about the straw. Yes. And I see you give him a bit of a hand there, but is that just the luck of the draw? Sometimes straw can be a problem, and other times it's not. If it's a bit damp, you have trouble. If yeah. it's dry, it does just go through just like wildfire. Oh. Yeah. 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 So, uh, well, yeah. good on you, Wayne. Thanks for that. That's all right. And uh, enjoy your day. Good luck and with the competition. I hope you enjoyed driving it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I, I said I'd get you on it. <laughs> was, it was it straight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you just keep that front wheel up. Yeah, you, you have to be a bit tight, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, as long as you keep it straight. And mind you, this plough steers on the back wheel as well. Oh, okay. So it's uh, double Help. steering on it. Sure, yeah. yeah. It takes a bit more to control it. Well, mind you, I didn't even do any twisting around carry no, on. No, 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 you're, you're a lunar. <laughs> yeah. Complete novice is novice. novice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good on you, Wayne. Yeah. Good Thanks, luck. Bill. All yeah. the best. Yeah. yeah. Okay, off we go. Plowing with George's plow, I've just got to keep that. George is helping. And I've got to be very, very careful. Apparently, I'm the novice of the novices. Back in this competition. George's line is pretty straight, so I guess if I stay on it, I can't go too far wrong. Now this is a, quite a unique tractor here with the, the Fergie diesel. And as you heard George say before, it's, uh, he's, he's had it a long time. So I got the string ready to pull, get out of this furrow. Pull the string. <clears throat> that was interesting, George. Pardon? <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah. I just wanted to have a look at my line. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. It's a light little bow, isn't it? Come out, look at this, folks. George, that's not too bad. It's a little bit of a bow there. This, you didn't do that. Oh, okay. You oh. only followed the furrow along and had it in before you started. Oh, okay, so it's not yeah. my fault. No, it's not your fault. Oh, oh no. well, that makes me feel really Probably good. Probably my fault. <laughs> no, I'm not very concerned about it. I'm not going to get anywhere, so... <laughs> no, fair enough. Oh, well, good on you, George. Thanks for letting me have a go. Well, oh, yes. Yeah. Good on you. Excellent. Well, there you yeah. go, folks. The ploughing at uh, Ellesmere. Yeah.